So recently I've been watching a lot of this YouTuber. I'm sure you've heard of him. His name's uh, Life in Jars. And his whole premise of his channel is making terrariums and um, ecospheres, which are things like this. Now, this is my failed ecosphere. I sealed it up on November 11th, 2018, and it's been dead for about a week. And today's date is, I think, January the 3rd. Well, that's the day I'm recording this. And this thing is completely dead now. You can tell the plant is dead. There's some floating plants left on the top, but for the most part, this thing is dead. And I'm not really sure why that is, but I do have a few theories. Uh, the first thing is, A, there wasn't enough food for any of the animals. Like, there's like zero algae growth. There's actually dead pond snails in here, so this environment is absolutely like horrendous. I'm actually going to open this up and take a whiff to see if it smells terrible. But my theory on how to create a more successful one is, A, bigger vessel. So I've got this bad boy. And that's actually the premise of this whole idea. What I'm going to do is take similar containers and make one an ecosphere and one a terrarium. So here we have an existing terrarium, which I'm going to redo like this. These two are relatively the same container, so we'll have an ecosphere and a terrarium. And I'm going to do the same with these chocolate milk bottles. So one will be a terrarium and one will be an ecosphere. And it's not really a which will do better. It's kind of just a fun thing. So they're like complementary objects, I guess. And then this is going to be a terrarium because it's not successful as an ecosphere. Now, my plans for how to make these more successful are to actually introduce some gravel from my tanks so that there's a bit of, they're seeded with beneficial bacteria. So the hope is that these environments will be a bit more stable. I don't know if that's true because I've seen successful ones that were just taken from like riverbeds and stuff. So I don't know exactly how it works, but you know, whatever, we're going to try things out. Um, now what I'm going to be doing is for one of these, I'm going to go down to the riverbed, not today, obviously but I don't know, tomorrow or something. And I'm actually gonna collect water from there. The other one, I haven't decided which one yet. I'm gonna do what I did for this one. I'm actually gonna source things from my bowl, which has Daphne and stuff like that. And yeah, or maybe I'll just get both in the riverbed. I'm not really sure. I want them to be different, so yeah. But let's open up this bad boy and see how it smells. Yep, that's absolutely horrendous. My God, but you know what's funny? That ugly terrain up there still smells worse. That's like pure ammonia and dead snail smell. So we're gonna dump this down the sink. That's revolting. Okay, so let's get started with the terrarium aspect of this project. So I've got another jar here. Well, it's a Coke bottle, so I think I'm going to use this one as well. So we've got this, we've got the cleaned out failed ecosphere, we've got this old terrarium which is going to become a new terrarium, I guess? Or, you know, let's make this one the ecosphere because it's got a better seal on it. This can be the terrarium. And then this one will be a terrarium. So that's four terrariums. Okay, so I've got some uh, gravel here and we're just gonna start filling these guys up, I guess. Okay, so as you can see, there's a bit of moisture in here, but that shouldn't matter too much. But I am gonna pour it out just to be safe. So I'm just gonna open this up. And we're gonna keep this lid for this. You know, you could get a proper like cork or something, but I'm just gonna use this for now. So I'm just gonna dump this out onto a paper towel. Okay, so now there's a bit of moisture left in here, obviously, but that's not gonna matter. And we're gonna face this this way so that, you know, this back part isn't what we're seeing. And that's kind of how we're gonna build this uh, terrarium. So next we're going to get our gravel here, we're just going to fill it up. We're going to make a giant mess of course, but that's fine. Okay, so I made like a funnel out of paper and I'm just going to stick that in the top here and then hopefully that should help a bit. Okay. 
Yeah, that's way better. Okay, so there we go, that's one terrarium, and now let's move on to the next one. Now, I'm actually considering not using this Coke bottle because it's really hard to see through. So it might kind of compromise its usability as a terrarium. <laughs> yeah, okay, I'm not gonna use this one. I'm gonna do something else with it. Okay, here we have the old um, Ecosphere one, and I'm actually just gonna go wash this out real quick because there's a bunch of sand still in here. I'd say that's clean enough. All right, and I'm gonna use the same rocks for, you know what, no, let's use a different type of rock for this one. So, hold up. If we just open what we're filming on right now, we can pull out. This stuff, and let's use up that. I was gonna grab a different one. I was gonna grab the same gravel I used in here, but let's use up all of this first because it's almost done. Might as well use the rest of it. All right, there we go. Let's put our terrarium back here, and I think we have enough. This should be enough. Oops. Yeah, but there's gonna be enough of this. And I, I don't know, I, I have like a weird, I kind of like this color, but I kind of don't, but it doesn't really matter because it's the bottom and it looks fine at the bottom. Okay, let's just use the rest of it. And what's great is because this isn't going in an aquarium, we don't have to like wash this out or anything because there's gonna be no water, so it doesn't really matter. Get in there, okay. Yeah, that's probably a good enough drainage layer. So that's two terrariums now. Well, not two terrariums done, but that's two different kinds of gravel. We'll see which one works better. It's probably not gonna matter. Uh, now let's do the final one. All right, so here's the big boy. And first I should probably try to peel off these stickers. Okay, this isn't coming off too easily, so probably just use water to get it off, so I'll go do that real quick. Anyway, you can see, um, you can still see there's like the bits of the, um, the tag on, not the tag, but the label on here, but because it's gonna be facing this way, and by the time the layers are all popped up and everything, it's not gonna matter. It's too, like, stuck on to get off, and I don't really care. So what we're just gonna do is, uh, pour the gravel in. Now, I think I'm gonna use... I wanna use this gravel, but is there enough? I might have to use most of it. All right, well, we'll see. I don't really have anything else that doesn't look ugly, so we'll just use that. This is one of those really cool jars that you can open like this. I love these jars. So, and I know normally these have like a rubber piece here, but I've taken it off because it's red and I don't like how it looks. So let's just put our gravel in the jar. And I'm probably just gonna dump as much of this in as I can. And might want a bit more than that. What's great about this jar is I can actually get my hand in here. All right, yeah, that's good. So that's the third jar. So this is like a terrarium trio sequel, I guess. And here are the other two. 
and uh, yeah, those are our jars. Now it's time to get some uh, window screen mesh and uh, charcoal and get the terrariums going. Okay, I thought I'd show a quick demonstration for those of you who haven't seen this before, but really what, all you need to do is get a rough, very rough shape, as you can see here. That's just something a bit bigger and then you can refine it a bit afterwards. So what you do is you take your terrarium. I'll try to line this up a bit better. You find a new spot. So let's go... Now let's just go here, so I'll roll it back a bit so you guys can see. And all you're going to do is just cut out a very like rough outline of your shape on the bottom. And make sure it's bigger, because you, you just want it to be bigger. Because it's better that it curls up and looks a bit ugly than, it, than that it's too small, and then the dirt gets into the drainage layer. Because what happens is, if the soil like seeps into this, then what will end up happening is the water and soil will mix, and you'll get a terrarium that smells terrible, and it'll eventually kill your plants. And you probably don't want that. I'd assume you wouldn't want that. I don't know why you would want that. But yeah. So I'll just finish this off the camera for a sec because it's hard as hell to do this while filming at this angle. So yeah, here you can see it's like a very rough shape. I'm gonna have to cut this front part off, but you kind of get the idea, right? Like it's very not perfect by any means. But yeah, this should be good. So I'll just snip this off and then we'll put all these in and then our ladder charcoal and I'll be good. Okay, so the next step is really simple. All you do is you take your cutout thing. And by the way, this is um, the same stuff you get as window screens, I think. And it's uh, like a carbon mesh. You don't want metal because if it's made of metal, what'll happen is it'll corrode and it'll eventually uh, kill your terrarium. I Because like, I don't know, the, the metal isn't good for them or something. I don't know, I've never done it, so I wouldn't know exactly. But all you do is you just kind of yeah. shove it in there and now the problem with jars like this is my hand can't fit inside. So what we're gonna do is get out a tool and you don't need any specific tools. You just need something that can poke. So this shovel that I use for dirt will be fine. You're just gonna kinda wanna push it down. Move it all around. Now, if it does curl up a bit more than you'd like on one side, uh, you can either take it out and cut it, but what I tend to do is just make that the back. So this would be the back, and you won't really look at that side. You might, but it's not gonna be a huge deal. I might take this out and cut it a bit though, <laughs> if I can reach it. Okay, so I cut off a bit. It's a small change, but it definitely helped out a bit. Uh, if you hear any background noise, I opened the window because apparently this stuff releases toxic stuff I'm not really sure but my chest started to hurt so I don't know if there's any correlation there but okay now let's do the other ones this one I want to make sure it's all right because I have a feeling it's gonna be hard to get it out if I fuck it up pardon my language <laughs> I've been trying to work on that but it hasn't go where the hell did that piece go there it is <laughs> I'm trying to work on my language a bit, but it doesn't seem to be working. Oh well, I'll stop swearing at some point. That's not like me trying to make these videos family friendly, like PG clean to get more views or anything. It's just, I think I should probably swear less. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, we'll see how this works. Hope for the best. And there we go. Now a pair of tweezers like these is in my opinion, essential, especially if you're going to be working with bottles like this. Now, these were sold as official, like, aquarium-like uh, tweezers. However, I have another pair that I got recently that I actually just remembered about. Did I say aquarium? I meant terrarium. But I did get some, like, well, they're not aquascaping tweezers, but they're, like, reptile 
heating tweezers. So there we go. These will work well too. Though I think I'm reserving these for fish tanks, so maybe I'll keep it out so it doesn't get all dirty. <laughs> I think making terrariums might be one of the most like relaxing hobbies ever. So is YouTube, but I'm sure it's not relaxing if you get more views or if you're trying to grow a channel. I'm just trying to make stuff because I'm bored and the education system is wearing on my brain. Okay, there we go. Get that in there. I might have to use these ones. Okay, so I ended up cutting it a little bit, but there you go. I'll push it down a bit more, but I just want to get all of them in before we do that. So now let's work on the last one, which is the big boy. And this one will be a lot easier because we have full sort of access and we can just stick our hand in here. I say our hand, I mean my hand. <laughs> I guess R refers to me and the one guy who watches my videos. <laughs> you know who you are. Yeah, okay, that'll be fine. Actually, no, I'm going to cut the back off a bit. Okay, that will be good. There's all three with their mesh layers. And as I said, this just prevents soil and the uh, drainage layer from meeting. So next we're gonna add in the charcoal, which is gonna make a huge mess. Okay, now let's talk charcoal. Now for charcoal, I use this medium uh, orchid media charcoal. Now I'm pretty sure you can use any charcoal, like especially like the stuff you get at Home Depot and like the barbecue section. The reason I bought this instead of that is because that bag was probably about as big as this bin. And, you know, if you're someone like Serpa Design, who does a ton of projects and has a whole, like, channel with a bunch of subscribers surrounding it, you know, it makes sense, and you're kind of like, you know, you're really into the hobby. And I am really into the hobby, but I don't really have a place to put that, and, you know, I've got all my other, like, stuff going on, so I'm not always, like, needing that much, which is why I only have this much. And now the reason this layer is essential to the terrarium is, well, first of all, it's not essential. You can have a successful terrarium without this stuff though I prefer to use it. I've seen some good success using it and I've seen some good success without it. The point is I like to use it and it goes either above the window window screen or actually below it. I've used it below and it's worked just as fine before. So, you know, do whatever you want. I'm gonna put it on top though. And uh, this is great because it actually, it helps to purify the soil. I'm not really sure how, I guess, because charcoal has like all these like little nooks and crannies and I guess it absorbs like certain bad things or I'm not really sure but it inhibits mold growth and it gives us a nice place for our springtails to inhabit so that's what we're going to do now. Okay so I didn't record the other ones because I didn't want this video to be super redundant but I'll just show you real quick. There's one and there's the other and now we're going to do it to the big one. So just you know grab as many as you can and just kind of layer them in there. You just want to get a nice amount. You don't need too much. Um, one thing you can do is if you want, you can actually mix up the charcoal. Like you can break it up. Oh shit. <laughs> one thing, as I was trying to say, one thing you can do is break up the charcoal and actually mix it in with your soil. Uh, I'm not doing that because I don't actually know why. I've done it a few times and it works, but nothing wrong with doing it this way. Okay, that's probably good. And your hands will look like this, but just wash them off. And now it's time to do the dirt and everything. <laughs> 